Just a quick note before this free video. If you click like and subscribe, I'd be very thankful. Let me talk about NXT. Let's go. All right, listen, I like this show a lot. I saw huge improvements. I saw good wrestling. I know there were people there that were unhappy with the show, largely because the last 20, 25 minutes was drastically rushed. They didn't have to hear Kalani on commentary. Look they are, uh, you know, they're on network television now. And so I presume at 10 o'clock, a lot of local stations go to news. And so you can't have an overrun. Well, it's not That just bloke that there line. doing weather ain't waiting. No, it's syndicated TV more than anything with the CW. Whatever. Sein Seinfeld numbers, things like that, that money is way more important to them than anything they put I think on they got network. some local newscasts, because I'm pretty sure one came no, on after the show for me. They they do, but newscasts don't make money. What makes I know, but the are... point is, the newscasts are live, okay? Yes. And it doesn't matter whether they make money or not. The weatherman ain't waiting around for know, Trick Williams to win the title. dope. I'm giving you another reason as to why they need to be I don't want another tent. reason. Just... I'm telling you why. Yeah, that's like not this the for only SmackDown. Why. It's exactly <laughs> like ahead. this for SmackDown too. I All these it, local nerd. numbers, the news, it's just how it is. But Let's the point go. is, Let's there's go. no overrun. So this show has to end on time. And as a result of that, if you watch like the end of the main event, it was like totally weird. It came totally out of nowhere. It's Trick Williams' big championship win. And he like avoided a charge and hit his move and won. And then... They start shooting off all the pyro and everything, and CM Punk's supposed to give Ethan Page the uh, GTS, but, like, there's confetti everywhere. You can't see a thing, <laughs> but they got, like, 10 seconds before they go off the air, so you just see this blur of CM Punk trying to give this guy a GTS, and that was, like, the end of the show. They just rush off the air because there's a hard out now, and they had a lot they wanted to do, and because of that, the main event... And, you know, if I had one criticism for the main event, aside from it being rushed is they had CM Punk there for obvious reasons. It's Chicago. You want to do a big number. And that's all fine and good. But, like, this is supposed to be Trick's big night. He wins the title back from Ethan Page. And this match was all about CM Punk as referee. It was CM Punk doesn't like this. CM Punk doesn't like that. CM Punk gets in the way of this. CM Punk gets in the way of that. It's like the CM Punk show. And I wanted Trick to, like, get his moment. And he kind of did. But then they rushed off the air. Because they're a damn weatherman. At least he gave everyone pizza while they watched the weather. <laughs> so Shawn Michaels comes out, 59 years old now, dancing his way to the ring to Sexy Boy. They announced new NXT title belts. So new stuff to sell you in uh, WWE shop. And then they went to Roxanne and Julia. And this is one of those things where I know everyone's waiting for me to just flip my lid and be angry and everything like that. And I will tell you this. I would not have beaten Julia, okay? I wouldn't have done it. But they did it. With that said, the match itself was great. Like, these two worked great together. And they'd never been in the ring together before. I thought they had a really, really good match. And at the end, a hooded person came out, attacked Julia, gave her a DDT on the floor, Throws her in the ring. Roxanne immediately hits her finish and pins her. So they gave Julia very much an out and a first feud. And they revealed that person was the returning Cora Jade. So if you told me, listen, we've just decided Julia is not winning this match. What do you want to do? I mean, I probably would have come up with this. So that's what they did. Well, I did tell you that I really thought that they could do something like this. And I thought it was with Stephanie Vacker, although they probably had her debut last week. So you would think that a curve was being thrown and just she was doing the attacking and then it's sky blue. I was surprised that they did it, but I thought the match itself now makes you want to see more of those two in the ring with each other. So that's what you wanted to get out of that. It was a sensational debut for Julia. But also, if Roxanne Perez isn't going to the main roster, her as your champion to start on, on CW, I think it's a great idea. Now, I will say that, well, so far so good. Because up and down this show, we had graphics. And not only did we have graphics... But we had people identifying other people by name. I shed a tear. I could have used a graphic every, there for Jade, not Sky Blue. Everything. 
Everything I could have asked for. Same thing. Was Jada Fire on the show? Everything I could have asked for on this show, <laughs> they did. They identified yes. people. They put graphics up on the screen. Now, my fear is that they're going to go, well, now everyone knows who everybody is, so let's quit. We don't need it anymore. I'm praying they don't do that. But I was delighted. Do you hear me? I was delighted by this program. If they decide not to do it anymore, I hope it's a locker room full of blondes just because then you'll know it's truly a rib on you. God, they even they even identified Lola Vice. Like she had a graphic up on the screen. I was just astonished. Then we had Zach Wentz and Wesley. And oh God. well, here's the thing with this match. They actually did everything that I wanted them to do as compared to the last time. Because the last time they had this blood feud and they broke up and everything. And then they go in and they're like doing flips and lockups and high spots. I'm like, what? That's not what you need out of this match. You guys are supposed to be in a fight. Well, this was a fight. And, and, if you watch the first time they wrestled, okay? I've said this before. If you want to know what I'm talking about, go watch a Drew McIntyre Sheamus match. When you're in the ring with a best friend, like, you beat the crap out of each other. That's just what happens in wrestling. And these guys are, like, great friends, but I watched their first match, and it was like it was like they were both wrestling an egg. They were trying not to touch the other person, not to hurt him or whatever. Well, man, that wasn't this match. They were killing each other. And Zach Wentz gave this guy some chair shots to the back. It was like this guy owed him money. I mean, he hit him so hard with these chairs to the back and they were pummeling each other and, and just elbow. <laughs> killing each other yeah and then finally there was a chain assisted meteora for the pin i mean for what this was it was great but didn't even say anything about wentz overshooting his dive and landing he almost killed himself him. there oh yeah. my god there were a couple of those outside the ring i mean those guys they went all out that's for sure and then we had Miz TV with Tony D and Oba Femi, which was, it was whatever it was. Yeah. But I will say that so Oba Femi, man, he's going to be a big, big star because he's got great presence. He's already working, like, more than you'd need for the main roster in a position like he's going to have. And he can talk. Yeah. Like, he out-talked Tony D here. So this was good. And we had Lola Vice and Jada Parker versus JC and Fallon. Yes. And here's the thing with this match, okay? This was, I mean, the funny thing is, like, jc has been around for a long time, and Fallon has as well. They were on the indies. Jada and Lola are new. But the thing is, this was a developmental match because they, like, had a good idea for the story, but in execution, it just didn't work at all. It's like, Jada and Lola are supposed to be having issues where, like, you know, Lola tries to make a save, but Jada thinks she tried to hit her and whatever. And then Jada gets knocked off the apron and she's supposed to think it's Lola, but it wasn't. And then she walks out like these were the ideas they had, but the execution, it was it didn't work. It, it looked too, like an indie match. Too much. Yes. No, it looked like developmental people that were not ready for prime time. And that's exactly what it was. And there's nothing wrong with that. But you're going to, to me, have to limit that more. I would assume on the CW. I would rather see more pre tape packages and things like that as opposed to live screw-ups because you have people that are just starting out in developmental they are going to be on national TV. So then afterwards, the heels go after Kalani, three-on-one. Bianca and Jade make the save. And so we have a six-person next week. Kalani Jordan, Bianca Belair, and Jade Cargill against JC, Fallon, and Jasmine Nix with a lot of whys. Yeah. And then the main event was Ethan Page, Trick Williams for the title. And, you know, like I said, I mean, the match was fine, but it was it was obviously rushed. And they're just going a 1,000 miles an hour to try to get everything in. And, you know, Punk is there to be the referee and be all over TV, which is what they wanted. I'm not blaming CM Punk. It's what they told him to do. But this didn't feel like the big celebration of Trick Williams winning the NXT title back that he basically never lost. But, I mean, the match was fine. And uh, then it was rushed off the air. I would say, I would say, I found this to be the best NXT show in months and months and months. And I am praying it stays like this. Because on this night, it was my favorite show again.
Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button and you'll never miss a video again.